How's it going, everyone? It's Sonic Ninja 101 here. Um, I'm not gonna be in my usual um happy-go-lucky mood for this video. Um, as probably everyone is aware by now, um, the legendary mangaka Akira Toriyama Sensei um passed away. Yes, um, at the beginning of the month, although news about his passing um was finally released um yesterday evening um, on March 7th and I'm not going to lie it's been it's slowly been hitting me hard you know because as probably if you're not if you if you're not aware yet um I'm definitely a huge Dragon Ball fan. Always have been, you know, ever since I was a little kid growing up on Toonami back in the 90s, you know. And it's, it's just been slowly, like reality has been slowly setting in. And I, I've been doing my best to cope with the news of, Akira Toriyama's passing, you know. Um, it it's really hard because um, Goku in particular is one of the four um, characters who I really looked up to and who I've been looking up to ever since I was a kid. Um, the other three being, or the other um, individuals being. Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, Sonic the Hedgehog, of course, and Spider-Man. So, um, it's really hard. It's really been hard to hear that the creator, one of my favorite characters of all time, passed away. Like, I haven't really felt this upset or sad. Um, like this ever since um, Stan Lee's passing back in 2018-2019 uh, um, the reason being is because I really did look up to um, all these characters because I admit even though I even though I had a wonderful family growing up you know and I did have a lot of good male role models to look up to. You know, they they just couldn't be in my life all the time, which is understandable, you know. Life happens, they, and they got their own lives to follow, so they couldn't always be in my life, you know. But, you know, all these characters I got to watch and grow up with and see how they overcame adversity and seeing how even though a lot of them faced you know some of the greatest evils in their worlds and their universes they didn't let that change them or negatively affect them you know they always stay true to themselves and I like to think that um, <laughs> I like to think that in my life after I faced so many negative things in my life and what that probably could have and would have broken other people or made them so jaded and jagged to where they couldn't trust the world anymore. I like to think that um, because of these characters and by extent, the creators of those characters, I've been, for the most part, um, able to stay true to myself. That I haven't let um, these negative um, things in my life change me, you know? And I do apologize if you hear me being... Um, if it's hard to really hear me, you know, I, 
I was kind of hoping by the time I started recording this, I would have gotten everything out of my system, but I guess I, I still have, I guess I still have some, some stuff going on inside. So I do apologize for the way that I'll sound throughout this video. I'm, I'm not doing a script or anything, by the way, this is literally me talking to you guys. But yeah, like I said, I like to think that in the environment, as in like um, the place where I grew up, where so many other youths, you know, were getting into trouble, were getting into bad things that let the world around them negatively affect them. I like to think that I. I didn't follow down the same path, the same roads, not only because of, you know, my family, but because I had these icons to look up to who, you know, like I said, who didn't falter or waver, who stayed true to themselves, you know, who never gave in to the darkness or who never gave in to um, temptation, who always stayed strong. <sighs> And uh, I just, I always really hope that um, the creators of these series really, you know, knew just how much of a positive effect their characters, um, their worlds had on not only just me, but just so many people around the world. Because I'm probably, I really, I know I'm not the only one who, you know, Dragon Ball, Star Wars, Sonic, or Spider-Man had a positive effect on, you know? I know I'm not the only one, and I'm so happy that um, all these series, and by extent, all the creators who were part of my life growing up, and have been continuously part of my life, even to this day, even though I'm a you know, a grown-ass man. <laughs> um, uh, I really, I know that um, Toriyama Sensei wouldn't want us to be sad, you know? he For crying out loud, he was a, a, a comedic writer at first, too, in, in case you guys didn't know. And I know that he wouldn't want us to be sad at his passing. So, um, in the hopes of changing the mood to this video, I think I kind of want to talk about some of my favorite moments from Dragon Ball because that was a series that I was most familiar with Akira Toriyama. Um, I still haven't really gotten into Dragon Quest or any of the other series that Toriyama Sensei was a part of yet. Um, but I think one day I will dive into more of his works and to his other series. Um, but for right now, like I said, I definitely wanted to, um, talk about and share some of my favorite memories with, um, Dragon Ball with you guys in order to help better lighten the mood. Because, <laughs> um, this video isn't, you know, uh, it's not supposed to be a sad video talking about Toriyama Sensei's passing. It's supposed to be about um, thanking him for bringing joy to not only my life, but to the lives of um, so many other anime fans who grew up in the 90s and who now pass their love of anime to the next generation and such. So with that said... Um, one of my favorite memories I have of Dragon Ball growing up um, was, and I don't, I don't really, haven't really talked about this here on YouTube, and I don't think I really talked too much about it with my Twitch audience on my live streams as well. But um, I remember growing up, um, I do think the whole reason why I got into Dragon Ball was because of my older brother, and. Um, my older brother was definitely someone, and who is still someone, I look up to very, very in high regards to this day. And 
um, one of the things that he always or he loved growing up was Dragon Ball, and I remember um, when our family was all uh, living together under the same roof in his room. He had a really amazing sketch of Piccolo. Um, I know he also had works, other works from other animes, but that Piccolo drawing, I I can still remember it to this day. It was just a um, headshot of Piccolo, and I still remember it even after all these years. And um, that that's definitely like I said, he's probably the biggest reason why I got into Dragon Ball. And of course, there was also Toonami 2 growing up. Like, if you were an anime fan in the 90s, um, you d we all definitely have Toonami to thank to introduce us to anime, as well as um, Pokemon on Saturday morning cartoons. You know, that um, all of those were big contributors to a lot of us 90s babies getting into. Um, anime and later on manga too so um, and I was really look, always tried to get home early enough to watch Toonami because I remember I was always bummed out that by the time I got home from school something um, like whatever big events Toonami was doing they always were ended but I always looked forward to watching Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z too um, that was something that I was really happy Tanami did back in the day was I remember they used to play um, original Dragon Ball episodes first and then Dragon Ball Z after. So I'm really happy that I got to grow with both series simultaneously. Um, another um, memory that I do have was um, definitely from the Raging Blast 2 era. Um, I never really showed it on YouTube, even when I started back way back in the day, um, any videos from me playing Raging Blast 2 because that was more so for my own personal enjoyment, but it was also where I was introduced to the, um, Japanese cast for the first time, the original cast, I should say. I remember when I was younger... I had a hard time getting used to the voices, mainly because I am I grew up with just the English dub. I didn't know anything outside of the English dub, so it was hard for me to get used to hearing, um, you know, a different voice for Goku when I had um, Sean Schimmel's voice in my head this whole time, but eventually I did grow to not only respect Ozawa, but to have it have it ingrained that she truly is Goku, and you know she she's the one who we need to all thank to because she was Goku's first voice, you know. And it also really hits like a it hits like a truck when after Akira Toriyama's passing, when she shared some some of the conversations they had. Especially the one where Toriyama said to her, um, I can trust you with Goku, right? You'll watch over him, right? <sighs> Every time I read that interview from her, it it always hurts like a freight train. Like I said, even right now, it's holding, trying to hold back tears singing about that interview. So yeah, and I have a lot, a lot of respect for her now. Um, another one of my favorite memories was of when ba um, Battle of the Gods was first announced. I was bummed out that I couldn't actually see it in theaters. I think it was because of t scheduling and such. I um, The only theater around me the movie was playing at, it was like an hour away and we just couldn't make it in time. Um, so like any other fan, I kind of desperately searched the internet for a way to watch it, and I ended up finding the Japanese dub, and that was another 
that was another reason why I really started respecting Nozawa. Um, because, like I said, I was, um, in order for me to watch the Battle of Gods movie, I had to watch a English sub version of it, and I'm so thankful for that. Because, like I said, I got, um, I got to be exposed more to the original cast, and watching, um, even though I knew how the fight was going to end because of leaks. Um, I was I still found myself cheering on for Goku against Beerus, hoping that maybe the leaks were wrong and somehow Goku was gonna um, beat Beerus somehow, you know. Um, and then of course, once we actually got the English dub, um, Sean Schimmel's "I will not let you destroy my world" line still sends shivers down my spine. Like even though nowadays I have my gripes with the English cast, the Funimation cast. I still gotta, I still gotta pay respect to Sean Schimmel for delivering an amazing line like that. Because, like I said, that 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 um, line, it's it's been ingrained into my very soul. That's how much of an impact it had on me. Um, something else too that. Later on, that is definitely a favorite memory of mine. Well, it was something more so that I learned was when um, the Tournament of Power arc was concluding for Super, I was actually surprised to hear that there were places where they had huge gatherings of Dragon Ball fans coming together to watch the episode together. Like They could have had sports festivals. They could have had you know, concerts, they could have anything um, at these places to attract a crowd like that. But the fact that all of those were Dragon Ball fans coming together to watch um, the the battles from the Tournament of Power arc, that to me that just speaks volumes of just how much of an impact Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Super have on the... Not only just the anime community, but on, on the world as a whole. Like, I remember one of my friends, um, Fatal, was telling me that he went to a local bar where he lives. And he remembered that um, one of the barkeepers um, actually turned on um, a Dragon Ball Super episode where Goku and Jiren were facing off. And pretty much everyone in the bar was just gathering around and watching the fight unfold. Um, I don't think he's as big of a... I don't think he's even a fan of Dragon Ball. But to hear him talk about Dragon Ball in, in high regards like that, it really means a lot to me. Um, and yeah. Um, I, really, um, I really do hope that... Um, um, Akira Toriyama's family is doing well, and I do pray for them, especially now that they're going through such a difficult time after the passing of one of their relatives. Like, if it's been so hard on us like this, I don't, I don't even know how I, I don't even, I don't think I can imagine how hard it's been for his family. To have lost such a, you know, to lose one of their own. I, I can only imagine, but I really don't want to, you know. Because like I said, just losing him as a fan and as um, someone who looked up to him as a role model hurt, hurts this much. I don't want to imagine how much it hurt to have lo lost a family member like that. And um, like I said earlier... Um, I haven't been this upset or sad since um, the passing of Stan Lee, creator of so many amazing Marvel heroes and icons. And um, I'm still thankful to this day that um, my buddy Keys and the Dragon asked me to hang out with him in voice chat for a while because it really would have been hard for me to have dealt with the loss of Stan Lee back in the day 
but I'm thankful that I, um, I had a friend who was going through the same thing, and we we both worked with each other to um, uh, to basically help raise each other's spirits after that, and um, I'm thankful that I had all my friends and um, the operatives going through this after we heard the news. Like my buddy Ace Operative had an entire live stream dedicated to Akira Toriyama and Dragon Ball after his passing. And like I said, I I probably would be would have been even more lost and hurt if it weren't for my friends, you know, like minded individuals who share the same passion that I do for these series. Because that was one of the things I think was hard for me growing up was um, finding people where I live who had the same passion that I did or, you know, who weren't afraid to show it off to the world because, yeah, it was, it was definitely hard being an anime fan back in the day because we, we used to get ridiculed for it. But seeing how much anime has grown since those days and seeing it become more widely accepted by um, society in general, I'm, I'm definitely happy about that. And all of that was possible thanks to creators like Akira Toriyama and so many other um, fantastic uh, anime and manga writers too for helping bring their stories, you know, beyond Japan uh, to the and share them with the whole world. Um, um, lastly, I, I know I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but this video isn't monetized whatsoever and not like my channel can be monetized right now. I just I just wanted to make this video to kind of get my feelings out there and to also pay my respects to the legend and the greatest of all time, Akira Toriyama Sensei. I just wanted to tell him thank you so much for all the wonderful memories for telling me that um, it was okay or it is okay to be myself no matter how wacky or goofy or how um, how far apart I set myself from other people that it's always okay to be myself and to you know never lose hope never lose faith in myself and to never give in or be swayed by, um, you know, the stresses of life. I'll always, <clears throat> sorry, I'll always hold those lessons true into my heart. And I'm going to, I will find my own way to share those same lessons to the world too. Because I feel like these are all important lessons that, um, that's got to be shared with the rest of the world, too, especially when it comes to the next generation of anime fans, the next generation of Dragon Ball fans, and maybe someday with the next generation of me, you know? Maybe someday I'll be able to pass this love of Dragon Ball and anime to my own kids someday. That'd be I think that'd be amazing if I could do that. But for right now, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Akira Toriyama. And thank you all to all my other, um, all the other creators of my favorite shows, series, and characters for um, helping me make, or helping me, helping make my childhood and childhood of so many other people amazing and incredible and to help push, you know, our imagination beyond what we thought was ever possible. Thank you all so much. And until we meet again at Kira Toriyama. <laughs>